age of steam. Made in Britain, it was one of the greatest technological breakthroughs the world had ever seen. The train powered Britain's rise to the summit of imperial power, and it changed everything from the food we could eat to the work we could do. Born in the 1830s, the age of steam lasted 130 years and then was gone. But today, as the rest of the world powers towards the future, Folks on the track. a network of 22,000 volunteers and 4,000 staff, like station managers, signalmen, engineers and drivers are working together on 130 heritage lines carrying 8 million of us every year. To see the sight, the sounds, the smells, the steam, the coal, everything. It's all there. Wonderful. This is the story of the people who are keeping our railway heritage alive. For them, the age of steam never ended. This is Steam Train Journeys. The Welsh Highland Railway runs for 25 miles from Carnarvon in the north down to Porth Maddock. With 25 steam locos and 80 coaches, including two observation carriages, the line carries around 100,000 passengers every year through some of the UK's most spectacular scenery. Work on the newest observation carriage started a year earlier at Boston Lodge Works in Porth Maddock. And the team are now halfway through the build. <laughs> carriage Works supervisor, Glenn, is masterminding the new build. The design of a stainless steel frame on a steel chassis. On the very end, we have our first-class carriage, which is usually an observation carriage. They're much more plush. They've got marquetry in them, carpeted floors, uh, LED strip lighting. They've got many coats of varnish and air conditioning. Glenn's been working in the carriage department for the last 20 years and started volunteering on the railways when he was 14. We're trying to avoid straight, flat surfaces because the whole feel of the carriage is about curves and shapes. We've made bits like this. It's a laminated moulding that's then curved in both planes that way and, and that way. Everything on site was built from scratch, including all the fixtures and fittings inside. Carriage builder Ollie sands back the panels. I do carpentry for the railway. Been here about 10 years now. You sort of pick up on a lot of traditional methods, things that we've, we've uh, been doing over the years. You just get used to the way machines work. There are five layers of wood from the outside to the inside, which need to be varnished and sanded to provide the depth of quality of finish that's the trademark of this type of carriage called a Pullman. Luxury coaches used for dining or sleeping. I'm doing the varnishing for the inlays, which is the interior panelling, and then two or three more coats afterwards to apply a nice, very nice finish. Anything that's first class gets a lot of attention. This will go from the wall where the post lights are and goes onto the ceiling to create a curved rib effect. Just putting the final coat of varnish onto the light fittings. This is coat number 15. People will pay quite a lot extra for first class style carriages. Um, that's where you've got the finish is far higher than the third class carriages. Two freestanding tables will sit at the observation end of the carriage, and it's volunteer Chris's job to put them together. Bits of wood, which go together like that, and then this piece goes round that way. And finally, there's a piece of uh, metal support that will fit on like that, and the table top will go here. I used to work as a university lecturer and we used to come here for our holidays. And then when the children left home, we started doing some volunteering. 15 years ago now, I suppose, I, I started working here, which is great fun. As well as three volunteers, it's taken four skilled carpenters and three upholsterers to get to this point. 
we're always pushing to make our carriages better, which is one of the reasons why we're building this one. Um, it's an upgrade of our present first-class carriages, which are a 1930s-styled Pullman interior. We want to go for something different. People appreciate that, uh, and I've heard them called Prosecco carriages. <laughs> if you get people sat in the observation end drinking their Prosecco. Inspired by Art Deco, this style of luxury design is something they came up with locally. We've come to call it Celtic Deco. The Pullman Carriage and Wagon Company was an American company originally, um, building very posh, plush carriages in America. It was brought across here, um, and they were painted in various colours over the years, but the predominantly well-known one is the brown and cream. The name Pullman comes from American engineer George Mortimer Pullman, who set about creating a comfortable and luxurious carriage dubbed Palaces on Wheels. Pullman trains in Britain were mainline luxury railway services that operated first-class coaches and a steward service. This is one of the, uh, the Prince of Wales feathers that's going to go up onto the, the partition like so. And then we've got the LED, the modern LED lighting that will backlight it. It's been hand-carved for us. It's these little touches of luxury and attention to detail that makes a Pullman special. The luxurious carriage was funded by the Welsh Highland Railway Society at a cost of £220,000. With over 2,000 members, the largest single donation was £10,000. But the team still have a long way to go before the naming ceremony. The South Devon Railway runs for six miles from Buckfast Lee to Totnes and boasts 15 steam engines and 28 carriages. The man under pressure to keep all the trains running is locomotive manager Ray Lee. Well, that big end must be down then, is he? Ray was born into steam, as his dad worked on the railways. I've been very fortunate. For the last 20, 25 years, I've been working on steam engines on other railways, and for the last 12 years, I've been working on this railway. Western engines are the best. Looking after this one has been a little dream. There is no better job, I don't think. But the morning starts with one of his locos in trouble. The axle box for locomotive 5786 is running hot, and it's brought back to the yard under its own steam. It needs to be back on the line tomorrow morning for its Sunday service. The plan is to raise this side of the locomotive so that we can move the axle box further up, clear of the axle, or to see what state the bearings are in. The bearings are a thin layer of metal between the axle and the box. What we're going to do is jack him up. We're going to slip the keeps out from underneath the box, inspect them, jack the actual axle box up, inspect the top, just to see how long we can allow it to run. We've drained the tanks on it. They hold approximately 1,000, 1,200 gallons, so we've drained that out of it just to reduce the weight. Lifting 50 tonnes of loco takes plenty of elbow grease. That looking all right? Hey, you're, is your wheel off the ground? So the plan is to jack up one side of loco 5786 so they can move the axle box further along and see what state the bearings are in. Is that level? Yeah. Okie dokie. Right, so we got the back wheels off the ground, just off the rail. Ray and volunteer John have to make sure that the wheel flanges remain below the top of the track. Otherwise, the whole engine could fall into the pit on top of them. Right, so we've jacked the, we've jacked the engine up. It's all square. It's gone up nice and heavy. The wheel is now off the rail. If you look down there, you'll see there's an inch clearance. Look, I can put that right under the wheel. The flange is still level with the rail. So if we were to jack him up so that that was level with that and something should fail, there's a slim chance that he would fall in the pit. 60 ton falling down here. You wouldn't want to be anywhere near that. Can you get me a bit of welding rod? Yeah. But Ray discovers a serious problem. So something is not happy up there could be in trouble. Could be in trouble. So, 
Can you see the top of the crane up there, John? Can you actually see the white metal of the crane in through the top? No, you can see the brass. That's as far as you can get. Under Loco 5786, they remove the spring and unbolt the bottom of the axle box. It's got this axle box problem. So the plan is that we're going to remove the axle box keep, we're going to inspect the pad, we're going to inspect the crown, and then uh, if it is all OK, we'll put it back together, uh, warm in fire in it tonight, we'll test it tomorrow, and it'll be out on a train on Sunday. Well, that's the plan, at least. What's the phrase? Best laid plans? Barron Street Works in Bury is part of the East Lancashire Railway, which runs for 12 and a half miles from Rottenstall in southeast Lancashire to Haywood in Greater Manchester. The railway has six steam locos, and the oldest in the fleet is Loco 752, a Class 23 saddle tank where the water tank sits on top of the boiler like a saddle. It's the last of its kind anywhere in the world and is undergoing a year-long restoration. Hopefully we should be able to have a look at the swing, shall we? Workshop manager Lee Kenny and 21-year-old locomotive fitter Callum are halfway through the restoration and it still isn't looking anything remotely like a working engine. We're working on the cab at the moment. Boilers just behind the vehicle. It doesn't look much at the moment, but as soon as the boiler goes in the frames and the chimney goes on and the dome goes on and other things, it starts to look like a steam engine. It starts to come back to life again. This was the engine running before its retirement in the mid-1980s. Built in 1881 by Bayer Peacock & Co in Manchester, it was originally used to carry short-distance freight, but it was later used for shunting coal. It saw 100 years of service before retiring 34 years ago when it was stored in the Keeley and Worth Valley Railway and then at Bury. The Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Trust bought the loco from the coal board, spending around £100,000 and three staff and six volunteers to restore it. With steam engines, every 10 years, they have to be completely rebuilt. So the boiler has to come out, all the pipework has to come off, wheels have to come out, everything has to come back in bits. After stripping down the loco, putting all the bits back together is a job that requires patience and real expertise. This boiler came to us about 12 months ago, and after a bit of a look around it from our engineering side, we decided that uh, there was some slight remedial work that needed doing. Let's get the boiler in, get it all bolted up, get it finished fitted with the ash pan on, that's it. Go back down and go along the wall. First, there's the delicate task of lifting the nine-ton boiler into the frames. You don't want to rush these things. We've got nine ton of boiler strung off it. It's a ten-ton crane, so it's no bother, but take everything nice and slow, move everything steady away, and uh, nothing can go wrong, then. Eh? Theory. Coming back. In front of the firebox, the throat plate, sits just behind this bracket between the frames. It's quite snug up against that. Right, going back. How are we looking? All right. I've always loved steam engines. I've always loved railways. I love the operations. I love the mechanical side of it. I love everything about them. When I was at school, when I was at secondary school, um, a number of my teachers said that I would never amount to anything more than a shell stacker. I started working on steam engines when I was about 12, 13. Started just learning off the guys that were doing it, really. I used to finish school on a Wednesday. I'd gone to the toilet at school and changed my clothes, jump off the school bus and go straight to the yard and start working. This is the oldest working steam shed in the world. And to get here, and even in the grimmest of mornings, you always enjoy it. You always, you always make a good day of it. Callum found his talent early. But even on a good day, there are problems. Oh dear. The boiler isn't level and is tilting to one side. It's going down the railroad and the boiler starts to uh, try and skitter from side to side. I still think it needs to come off this tube plate side. Oh, if out. Oh, what is it? We are sat on the horn guides. What? Both sides. 
No, we're sat on the horn, guys. It's foul here. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? We're going to have to pack it up. The expansion brackets riveted to the side of the firebox should sit neatly on the frame top, but they have been fitted in the wrong position. Yeah, in theory, we've got a resolution now. We've found that the boiler, um, the foot pads that sit on the expansion brackets on the side of the firebox aren't the same height, so the boiler is sat crooked slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pack one side and pack the other side slightly more to bring the boiler in line and then we'll get the clamps fitted and we'll do it all um, proper fitting work. Packing the boiler with steel bars will support it either side and will bring it up to its correct position. Though the bars must be placed accurately for the boiler to be set level. So, we need to uh, pack the boiler, but we need to pack it slightly more on one side. So what we're doing is we're going to uh, machine half an inch off of this piece at the top which will give us a wide enough piece and a tall enough piece for the left-hand side. That's it. After a few anxious moments, the boiler is in place. It's finally beginning to look like a loco. For the last 34 years, Loco 752 has been sitting idly. Yeah, I got the caps here. But now, after a 12-month restoration, it's about to be fired up for the first time since retiring in 1985. Oh. Yes, 137 at the minute. Part of uh, the steam test is going to be to check all the valves are working properly. One of the major valves um, with these steam engines is the regulator valve. It's just gently open the regulator valve, and you can start to hear that going now. And that shut's lovely. That's what we want to hear. The regulator controls the flow of steam down to the cylinders to adjust the speed of the loco. The absolute most important thing on any steam loco boiler is these two things here, a gauge glass. Water comes in one and steam comes in the other, because if you don't have them, you don't know how much water's in the boiler. You just about make out the water level in the boiler there. Because if you don't have the water level and you don't know where the water level is, you've got a risk, you know, serious risk of uh, damaging the boiler and, and worse. So we'll do a quick test on these and make sure that these are working properly. We shut the water and that should be now pure steam. Loco 752 hasn't generated steam in 34 years and Callum has rigged up a whistle valve as part of its steam test. Basically no leakage whatsoever, so perfect. Generally now we're looking towards cladding, uh, finishing the smoke box, and then once that's done, we can get the saddle tank back on it. Uh, we've trial fitted it, we know it fits now. We've got uh, new brackets all made up. Hopefully once it's moved for the first time and it finally gets out there on the railway and starts pulling trains, I won't have to worry about it then. There's a couple of leaks. There'll be a bit of water, but in theory, it all works. Job finished. The big test now is to see how Loco 752 fares running on the railway after 34 years. Morning, dear. Are you travelling? At Ramsbottom Station on the East Lancashire line, Chandra Law has recently been promoted to the role of station master. Oh, it's every year, is it? It is. Yeah. It's every year. It's mid morning and Chandra's expecting many visitors for a very special annual event in the village. Today we're hoping for a nice day. It's the black pudding throwing competition. Um, the town's going to be busy, they're setting up at the moment. We're hoping the trains will bring the crowd, the trains will be busy. 
That's fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We're hoping for a crowd. Oh, train's here. Today is one of the busiest days in Ramsbottom Station's calendar. The annual World Black Pudding Throwing Championships, with up to 500 visitors expected. Morning. With only a couple of staff on the platform, Chandra will need to be on her toes to cope with the deluge. As station master, Chandra is responsible for everyone's safety. Twelve trainloads of people are expected today, and each can carry up to 100 passengers. Let's hope the second train bring a lot more people in for the town. I mean, yeah, can't wait. We're ready for the town. Are you going in? Here we are. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a nice journey. Thank you. The first and second trains are fairly quiet. Chandra's worried that not enough visitors are coming to Ramsbottom. But third time's a charm. Are you coming for the black pudding? Oh, is that today? Yeah, it's in town, centre of town. Are you coming for the black pudding? Yeah, yeah it's in town. Right in town. This train brought the whole crowd in. So it's good for the town, it's good for us. Very pleased. And this is what the crowds have come for. The official World Black Pudding Throwing Championship. Have you come for the black pudding? Yes. Yeah, but it's right in the centre of town, dear. Okay. At Ram's Bottom Station, on the East Lancashire Line, Station Master Chandra Law is welcoming the crowds for the annual World Black Pudding Throwing Championship. Have you come for the black pudding? No, it's in the middle of the town. Local legend says the competition dates back to the War of the Roses, when the House of Lancaster and the House of York ran out of ammunition and started throwing food at each other. Black pudding from Lancashire and Yorkshire pudding from Yorkshire. The aim is to knock as many Yorkshire puddings off with three lobs of the black puddings, the record is 12. Competitors pay a pound for three tries and must knock down the most Yorkshire puddings placed on top of a 7.6 metre high plinth. The tradition was revived 35 years ago, with the black pudding coming from an original pudding maker in Bury and wrapped up in ladies' tights to stop them falling apart. This year, almost 1,000 people tried their luck with many coming from far afield. I'm the current world champion at the moment. And this is last year's world champion. And um... me this year. Although she's worked at Ramsbottom for 21 years, Chandra's throwing skills have never been put to the test. I never had the chance to go because we can't go because we have to be here to see the trains. We have to do our duties. So we never had chance to go, really. But today, Chandra's fairy godmother is smiling down on her, and she's allowed to go and try her luck. Now, we have to get in the queue. Look at it. Businesses. Chandra's first two miss. Not getting nowhere near. Not getting anything. Wow! But the third strikes home. Each lucky competitor is awarded a certificate. Thank you. Look, kids. Can you believe it? I did the black pudding. Chandra is overcome with emotion and pride and is reliving the winning throw with anyone that will care to listen. 
we all travelling? Yeah. Yeah. Got your tickets, dear? Yeah. Come in. Come in. Luke, you will never believe it. One was way out. I was so embarrassed. The second one was nearly, but gone the other direction. The third one touched it. I just couldn't believe it. I nearly cried. Honestly, I can't believe it. You'll be proud of me. Did you win? Oh, my goodness. I know. I know. And for Chandra, it's been an exciting and successful day, keeping the services running efficiently and the legend of Ramsbottom alive. You know, I feel like I'm in school. Be careful, sweet. Thank you. Thank you. At the South Devon Railway, Ray Lee and engineer John are up to their elbows in Greece, fixing up a malfunctioning loco. Loco 5786 has to get back on the tracks for tomorrow's service, but there's a problem with the axle box. Just getting some oil into the top of the axle box so that overflows, so we can start lubricating these pads. The pad is a piece of felt about an inch wide that's soaked in oil and lubricates the bearing. But it's gone hard, which can easily happen over time. We're purging the pad with a cleaning agent, and then we're going to go in around the journal and purge all that with a cleaning agent, and that will wash all the residue. It'll all just wash it down. Then we're going to soak it all in oil and rebuild it. Ray and John clean the bearings and lubricate it with oil for the loco to run safely. A lot of it is experience. Uh, they say, well, why are you picking on this? Well, because your sixth sense is telling you there's a problem with it. The thing is telling you all the time where you need to be going to maintain it. The slightest little wisp of steam, you see water dripping somewhere, you see a, a different colour oil where it should be clean oil. It's all telling you everything. Trevor's still here. He's all right. Flushed out, Ray and John rebuild the axle box and lower the loco back onto the rails. Going down then. Ready to start work again. Sure enough, 24 hours later, loco 5786 is trundling down the line and once again blowing off steam up and down the South Devon Railway. At Boston Lodge Workshop on the Welsh Highland Railway, things aren't looking quite so shiny for Glen and carriage builder Ollie, who are building a brand new Pullman observation carriage. It's now only eight weeks away from the naming ceremony. We've got varnishing to put onto the carriage to protect the, the lining and the lettering. We've got the hopper windows that are still to in, be installed into the carriage, so they're the, the opening windows at the top. They're the big. They're the big jobs to finish it off. Um, it will need to go into the erecting shop next door, the metal working bay, um, to have its bogies installed underneath it um, and have its twist test to make sure it's not going to fall off the track. And then, really, it's ready to go into service. Job for today, putting the lettering on this carriage, or the name, I should say. This is traditional railway work. Glenn specialises in sign writing and it's his fine attention to detail which contributes to a first-class restoration. Biggest problem with this kind of lettering and doing it this way is finding the time to do it. Because <laughs> it's reasonably time-consuming. This will come back in in about three years' time, this carriage, for a re-varnish. We'd expect to get about seven to ten years out of this paint job. Every first-class Pullman has a unique name. This carriage is called Gurfai, the name of a local river which winds alongside the railway. You need a very steady hand, and with a name like that, able to spell. Carriage builder Ollie is also adding the finishing touches. We're just fitting the last few lights in the main saloon. Everything else is done, really, regarding the lights. 
The British Pullman carriages were the first to have electric lighting in 1881, running on the Victoria to Brighton lines. And this will be the first UK Pullman carriage to be completely fitted with LED lights and all the mod cons. We've just put all the interior in and all the lighting up. There's a few bits left to do. Um, beading to cover joins and panels and uh, bits of inlay. Uh, a few, few fiddly bits to sort out with the light patches, but uh, it's not too far off. Uh, the inside, as you can see, is largely there. There's not a lot left to do. I would estimate there's about three weeks of work just to finish this off now. As well as being an observation carriage, it will also be used for cream teas and as part of the Christmas Santa train. Started putting some of the internal mouldings in. I think that's the last of the major building work for the carriage. Um, once that's done, then it's all just finishing barging work and actually putting it into the vehicle. Internally, we're probably only a month away from having the inside finished. It's 10.30 a.m. at Porth Maddox Station on the Welsh Highland Railway. And after a year of new build, the Pullman carriage is finally about to undertake her first journey. The finished carriage, ready for its maiden voyage. So it's taken 12 months for us to get it to this, this stage. And carriage works manager Glenn can't wait to show off the months of hard labour. There is a, quite a degree of pride in seeing these come out from the workshop, particularly on their first run like this. It's going to go up to Carnarvon, which is our station at the other end of the Welsh Highland Railway, and there will be a naming ceremony there, teas and coffees. The carriage will have a shelf life of a good 50 years to come. And on board are some very important guests from the Welsh Highland Railway Society, who funded the £220,000 price tag. <laughs> Would you have anything to do with it, Fred? No, no, it doesn't at Now, on its maiden journey, the hard work has all been worthwhile. Over the last 12 months, 60 litres of varnish were used for the inside, 12 coats of varnish applied, 10 litres of purple-brown paint for the outside, 9 coats of paint applied, 22 seats installed. And the carriage is well on its way to Carnarvon for the naming ceremony. We'll move it out of the way, bring the tables up. Yeah. At Carnarvon Station, manager Stephen Gregg is in the thick of final preparations. Today is an exciting day. The railway has been building its brand new observation carriage because up until this point, it's been funded by the Welsh Highland Railway Society. With some very important guests invited, including the members of the Welsh Highland Railway Company and Society Board, Stephen's keen to make a good impression. So he's called in a bigger team than usual for a Saturday to butter up the VIPs. I'll fill this up for you, OK? Just a quick one today to see where we're all at for the Guerdavai naming ceremony. I thought one doing buffet and one doing tea and coffee, because then we can flip back to forwards from the shop if that's busy. I was just thinking, what I might do is I might text Paul and say, can you just actually confirm how many people are on the train? Because... Getting the right numbers of ham and cheese sandwiches is crucial. If we do 25, just because I don't think we'll have enough fat, we'll just leave it to the we'll do one. Yeah. As well as having extra teas and coffees to go around. We don't want anything obscuring any view to that way. I've not seen it moving, so to see it coming into the station today is going to be really, really exciting. Looking forward to it. On the Welsh Highland Railway, the newly built Pullman observational carriage is on its way to Carnarvon Station for the grand naming ceremony. On board are members of the Welsh Highland Society who funded the carriage, as well as stalwarts like Cedric, the oldest fireman on the line. With 12 months of modelling and new build, the attention to detail is proving to be a big hit with the very knowledgeable passengers. The look of the coach um, on the inside, um, you feel like that you're travelling back um, a hundred years ago. 
um, the great days, I suppose, of the railway, where in fact I would say that probably the greatest days of, of steam is in fact now, purely because the Heritage Railways um, look after the locomotives a lot better than some of them were looked after in the past. I was just amazed at the workmanship. The actual ride is really smooth. Did notice we had a few waves in our coffee. <laughs> It's fantastic. It's just so much more comfortable, isn't it? Much more space. With the launch of the carriage, the railway is staying true to its heritage, utilising the technology of the present and embracing the future. Only another 12 miles to Carnarvon Station. Once you've got the heat in it, it'll start to boil. I wish I could get some heat in me. <laughs> Grim Lancashire weather. 100 miles away at Baron Street Loco Works on the East Lancashire line, the other build is in full throttle. The day has finally come for Loco 752's big reveal for the people who funded its restoration. To think, only 12 weeks ago, it looked like this. The last couple of months have been frantically busy. Inserting the boiler into the frame, putting all the pipework together, fully bolting everything down, and placing all the pipework in the smoke box. So we've got a lot of them people coming, uh, a lot of the old guys that have worked on this, you know, 50 years since they bought it. So we'd uh, coincide the steam test that we needed to do for ourselves with them coming as well so they can see it in steam. So I think there'll be some uh, shock faces today. So I don't know if they're all expecting it. If you look on the top of the little end strap... It's always nice, the first steam, the first move and that. Massive sense of achievement. Now for the big test of taking the loco out on the line. It's the first time it's moved under its own steam. First job is to check the brakes. Turn everything on, check the brakes have all worked. Safety valve seems to work all right. So, if it moves, yeah. There's no strength in it, is there? Still, it's designed to do that, isn't it? So. The uh, sense of satisfaction, definitely. When you put all these hours into something, I suppose it's not like anything. Hello. Go forward, then, eh? <laughs> Regulator's nice, brake's nice. 138 year old, it's still a good one. Just in time to impress some very important visitors from the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Trust. Richard Greenwood from Rochdale was responsible for bringing the loco from the colliery to Haywood in 1968, where it was saved from the scrappers. I've been involved one way and another with this engine over. 50 years, but it's got to the stage now where I can't lift heavy hammers and I can't lift heavy spanners, so that I've got to stand on the sidelines and watch the younger end uh, take on the heavy work of restoring it. This gentleman here worked on this engine in 1968-1969 when he was a scoreboard. He used to come down on a Thursday night with two of his mates from school. We used a wire brush, big, big wire brushes, to get the really sort of heavy rust on it. And then we were wet and drying it for absolutely ages. Have you, have you had it moving up and down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go for a run if you want. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Johnny, come on, we're going for a run. We're taking the, the um, 1530 to London Euston. Come on. For Stefan from Rochdale, the visit brings back vivid memories of working on the loco, which he can now share with his family. My memory is of working in the saddle tank and uh, crawling inside it and uh, sweeping up the debris inside and putting it into buckets and taking it outside. <coughs> Just living history. And I think it's been extra special to bring my son and grandson then as well so that they can see it and say, I've got a connection with this, as bizarre as it seems, I've got a connection with it when I was, you know, just a teenager myself. We 
really good day today. We've managed to do our internal steam test. Um, apart from a few little things, we're happy. Uh, I'm definitely happy. The added bonus for being able to get some of the trust down as well, who own it. They've gone away with lots of happy smiling faces, um, which makes the job all worthwhile. If we can say that we've uh, put a smile on the face of the owners, you know, the work that we've done, then that'll do me. It's been a grand journey for the loco. Over 130 years of history, ending with a magnificent restoration. At Carnarvon Station, on the Welsh Highland Railway, final preparations are underway for the Pullman Carriage's grand arrival, where station manager Stephen and his team are waiting. We know 25, so we're, going to, we're, we're aiming for 30, just in case. It's always better to go five over than be five under. And Stephen is counting the number of sandwiches to make sure there's enough to go around. The girls have done a fantastic job at the buffet, as always, and now they do it. They always do a fantastic job. Right on time, the train steams proudly into Carnarvon Station at 1pm. Everyone seems to have dressed up for the occasion, including Cedric. This quality of carriage can only be compared to the larger trains on the standard gauge, such as the Venice Simple and Orient Express. These constructions are absolutely superb. Already legions of fans have lined up, all eager for a glimpse of the new carriage as it's given a proper name and send-off. Many special skills have been kept alive by the workforce at Boston Lodge, and recent apprentices have had the opportunity to learn these skills through a scheme funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. The carriage is expected to carry up to 10,000 passengers a year. The comments from the people that have got off the train are, are amazing. Everyone says it's stunning and a very, very comfortable ride. The standards just get better and better every time they build a carriage. Stephen's extra calculations have paid off, and there's enough tea, coffee and sandwiches to go around. We're getting known within the town, we're getting known within, within the tourism community, and it's been a busy summer. It's been a nice summer where people have been working together, the team have been getting to know how each other's skill sets work. So it's been an interesting year, but I've enjoyed it very much. For Stephen, the new carriage, together with the recent opening of his new station, have both contributed to a very successful year. Have a good trip back. It's the tireless dedication of the many staff and volunteers around the country that keeps our heritage railways running and provides the magic that is riding on the steam trains of Britain.